Hey guys, D Mike here. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Super Mario Odyssey. Hope you're all doing well. I actually did an awesome job of starting a recording without actually recording. So I did get one power moon off camera un unintentionally. So you'll just have to believe me that I... There's this little stone archway that's up there and I grabbed it by using an electrical wire. So go ahead and just believe me or don't. So you can actually plant this in here and eventually that will grow into a power moon, I believe. But yeah, um, so it seems like the locals are experiencing a little bit of frigid weather. We uncorked the inverted pyramid, which has unleashed a cold blast of blizzardy air from the ground butthole. This is one of the many gimmicks of the game that will provide you the ability to get a power moon. This is called the Bullet Bill Maze Breakthrough. They basically just kind of give you a little hint if you're into that. But yes, certain places around the United States, especially California now that I think of it, are kind of uh, dealing with some uh, pretty frigid weather. Uncharacteristic for the time. Some of my friends that live in that area are mentioning that it is quite blustery and unfortunate. I do hear a power moon. Where is it? But yes, I will try not to... There it is. Try not to get too many power moons off camera. That was obviously an accident. Usually when I record, I uh, have a whole system and setup that I do it, but I didn't because reasons. The reason is that I forgot. So there you go. Whoop, there we go. Like I said, I'm going to try to get all the power moons that are relative and reasonable along with a, um, a decent amount of the kind of local coins. See, there's even some that I got already that the game was like, you already did this, you big dummy. So it's okay. We're still having a good time. But yes, so hopefully you're all enjoying yourselves. Hopefully you're enjoying this series. I'm enjoying it. This is a fun game. I'm having fun. I'm gonna try to talk to as many of the Toasterinans as I can, see what they're up to. Yes, so we're actually going to be headed towards the pyramid now that we've explored a little bit in Toast Arena. There isn't really much you can do in the city yet. But as you run around at nighttime, which I feel, I feel like the game is permanently set to nighttime for now, at least until you finish up this area, that uh, these little goblins, ghouls, skeletons will be... Whoa! Crisscross will make you jump, jump. They'll uh, permanently be coming after you. So if you want to get away from that, obviously, you just kind of dunk on them a little bit. But we're headed to the inverted pyramid in the sky. How do we get up there? That looks fun, doesn't it? Oops. Thought I moved away from this guy. They're kind of like mummies and skeletons all at once. Mummikins. Sounds like a name that somebody would call a child. Well, we saw in the last episode that there's a sphinx over here. Probably not as big as the real one in the old Egypts, but we're going to give it a little check out and see what's going on here. Can I talk to you? Hello? Hello? Maybe not. I don't know if I'm able to talk to this thing yet. I thought I could. Oh, there, there it goes. Give me a prompt. We have to stand in front of it in the proper location. Let's answer the riddle. What is the thieving monster? Desire from this land. Do we remember, viewers? Is it maracas, freezy treats, sand, or a ring? It happens to be the binding ring. That is a correct answer. And in doing so, we can now proceed through the Sphinx's back door. It's very smelly. And we are awarded with riches far beyond our imaginations. Once again, actual coins in this game aren't really as much of an important commodity they are intense as lives. So if you're into that, kind of like I said, intense, but it is kind of intense. There we go. So that's the treasure of the Sphinx. I would love the game to let me turn the camera around. Okay. So now that we have accomplished such a feat, we're going to be heading into the frigid bottoms of the Sand Kingdom. Go ahead and take a big old leap of faith right into the smelly below. And yes, this game does auto-save, so if I do make a mistake, obviously, 
There's not really much coming back from it. But I will alert you to what I do like I used to do in Super Mario Galaxy, so... Don't worry, I won't- oops! Okay! That was intense. Unintentional. Just a little... demonstration. Okay. So we're gonna be dealing with some ice physics today. Ice physics in my desert world? Get out of here! We're gonna need to activate these laser beams. In order to do progression, we need them to take out these bricks for us. Oh no! Okay, whew. Yeah, you can toss the cat back and forth a little bit to stabilize yourself. I do believe that this is actually a level that should have a gimmick in it that I think is hilarious. I don't remember if it's this one or if it's later, but I think it's this one. And it's really good. Oops. Okay, I don't remember how to... All right, well, I got saved by the Goomba. Was not expecting that. But yes, Goombas are very sure-footed and surprisingly very stackable. So as you'll see in a moment here, we can collect our Goombas. And we won't crush each other because we're nice pals. And we love to make tall towers. Unfortunately, though, the more Goombas you have, the more unwieldy things become. This is actually a bit of a problem. I don't know how I'm supposed to grab these boys. I need to be higher up, that's for sure. Oops! Or just die. We are doing great. Thankfully, we have like 80 more tries based on my good math. We'll try that again. We'll be a little bit more careful. Oops. Still don't know all the cap techniques yet. Like I mentioned before, it's been a hot minute since I played this game in its entirety or just in general. So did I kill that Goomba on accident? I did not mean to do that. It's actually a bad sign because I need the Goomba to be successful here. I'm actually going to go ahead and sacrifice my life. That one was intentional. Yeah, I don't actually want to kill that Goomba. I do believe that I need as many as possible. Can I get around there from somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Okay, that worked. Very good. Let's go ahead and capture said Goomba. And continue, continue along. I cannot talk. There's Goomba number two. I feel like there's... Oops. Oh, you cannot run into them. You have to hip-hop hippopotamus. Hip gotcha. Now, if there was a way up there... I actually don't know if I need these Goombas in particular. I just really want to have access to this stack. Whoa! I don't know if I need all of them either. I just want some. Oh, okay, I guess I can get the full stack. Look at me, I'm a developer! Okay. Very cool. And I think if I actually can lure these... Oh, there's more up there. Look at this. Okay. So I don't know how many of these I actually do need, but... Hold on. If I could jump onto all of them, I could be the Goomba Tower pro... Oh, boy. Well, maybe not. I need to switch off into... My large Goomba Tower. It's not the size of your tower, but how you use it. Alright. Come on. Get mad. Come and get me. Oop. All right. This is getting a little ridiculous. Oop. Okay. I don't remember what the upper limited on these is. Upper limited. Upper limit on these is, but it's at least enough to grab this power moon. The Goomba Tower assembly. Can we stay as the Goomba? Yes. I was going to say, I would love to stay as the Goomba Tower, actually. We're doing okay. They can jump up to one block of height. And they can even dash, too, so... You can do a little bit of a high jump. The game is immediately proving me wrong, which is great. Thanks, game. We're gonna try to come over here and grab these Sand Kingdom-specific coins. We're actually doing pretty okay. Almost at 50%. Very nice. Whoop. Okay. 
And we'll see what happens here when we hit one of these things. We actually have enough power moons already to exit the kingdom, but we will not be doing that. Oops. Okay, looks like we need to evacuate the Goomba Tower and move along just as Mario. It looks like we're going to be getting our bullet bill on. I do believe that these bullet bills are given an aesthetic that has them looking like a, uh, a tourist. They have a nice little uh, visor going on. Don't forget, though, if something has a hat on, you can't capture it. So just something to keep in mind. You got to knock it off first. Remove its headwear. Oops. And then you can proceed, of course. I don't know what the real point of this little middle platform is. I guess it's to give you somewhere to go in between, because these bullet bills don't have infinite propulsion power. You do actually have to make some haste. Make haste, not waste. But when you uncork the ground butthole, anything can happen. Ooh, viewers, does this look like a uh, boss fight team? Maybe, what do you think? I don't know what this does. Is this where we put the coins? Or our doodle? All right, here we go. Let's see what's up ahead. Looks kind of like one of those statues we saw earlier, but much larger. And by golly, that looks like a battle arena. Maybe we should fly over to it as fast as we can and be incredibly unprepared. What do you think? How about it? Okay, viewers, prepare yourselves. Large head and massive fists enemy. The first one of any kind in a Mario game. You never see these. He thinks we've taken the ring. We have not? Yes. This, my friends, is large head, big fists. The, the guy? I don't know the actual name of this enemy, but um, you do actually have the ability to uh, take over its fists. That's not a normal capture, but you know. What you're going to want to do is not run into the other fist. Actually, you're going to want to punch it in the face. So viewers, if you like punching stuff in the face, which I'm sure you do, don't we all, here's your chance. You gotta steer away from the crystals. Can't be a very big fan of violence. Always about getting retribution. Cappy's pretty vindictive in this game, as you'll see. He will definitely take sides, and that side is always going to be Mario's. But you gotta keep moving because Mr. Fisticuffs over here will not hesitate to give you the old smash. Oops, that was close. I was trying to long jump and I did the opposite of that, which was not long jumping. All right, so anyway, we're gonna make sure we steer away from the crystals. It does give you a little bit of time to swing away, so it's not a one and done. If you do bump into the other thing, you're still okay. Woo! Tried to be fancy there and I failed. Surprise! Yeah, there's not really a ton of um, a ton of time here to get out of the way. And it does appear, though, that just basic running is good enough, I would say. He's going to spawn more of these embedded crystals. I'd really love him to actually get that. Yes, get that going for us. That's a twofer. Get healed and time to throw down. All right. Except for I ran into everything. So that was a little tutorial on what happens if every crystal that comes your way, you make impact with. Not ideal, not what you're supposed to do. But now you know how to avoid it. Yeah, he's gonna get a little bit faster. He's gonna start swinging things more erratically. And I'm doing a great job here. This is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You know, classic like seven or eight cycle boss that can be done in just one round. I'd like to. We're just gonna try to bring it around town here and bop him right in the nose. Oh no, I'm so sorry. And of course, as you do when you get defeated in life, you explode.
into energy. There's our reward for defeating an innocent local legend. Cappy's very excited about beating up a cultural entity. There's a hole in my desert, and it smells, and it's cold. Okay. So far, so good. We've done it. Usually, by the time you're getting that multi-moon, you should probably have enough of the pieces to move on to the next area. We sure do, Cappy. Cappy's in a bit of a rush, though. He's like, we need to get the heck out of here. Let's talk to Treasure Toad real quick. Ooh. Kind of had a weird intermittent burp there. Apologies. Let's do this. Okay, looks like that's just to the right of the uh, middle area, but we're pretty far away from that. This is something I was actually going to show off during my one fake attempt at a recording. We can talk to the Jaxi here. Yes. Let's go ahead and try this. Thanks, Jaxi. So we can go ahead and hop on its back. It's a pretty quick way to traverse the desert, if you're into that. This is kind of where the treasure toad told us to go. Look at that! So that was worth it, right? Kind of wish I would have stayed on it a little bit longer just to hear the music. Kind of reminds me of some of the desert area from Skyward Sword. Oops. We're gonna grab that one Power Moon here in a moment. Not that we need it. We already actually have hit our quota. Oops, whoa. Excuse you. Get out of my way. All right. I don't know if we can just long jump to that. I feel like we probably could, but it might be safer if I'm able to... Can I take a bullet bill all the way over there? Let's find out. Oop, nope, there's one up here. I didn't realize there was a launcher up top. Handy. Could have probably done some pretty cool, you know, good at this game jumps, but I don't know how to do them yet because I haven't figured it out. So instead, we'll just grab this power moon. Leaning on a pillar. And we will take this bullet bill as far back to the Odyssey as we can. Very cool. Instead, we're going to be hoofing it. This is fun. Maybe we'll just become a baller. This is actually a pretty fast way to move, too. I did talk about this a little bit, but I haven't really used it, so here we are. Also, very hard to control. <laughs> I do love their uh, their music that they play. A little bit of fiddle for you. All right, now that we're back to the Odyssey, we're going to go ahead and fill it with our juicy moons. There you go. Present the currency. Receive orange drink. How many did we get, viewers? Can you do the basic math here? Oh my gosh, it was 20! Holy moly, the Odyssey is powered up. Now that we have completed the Sand Kingdom for now... There's a fork in the road, viewers. Which kingdom do we want to go to? The Lake Kingdom? Or... The Wooded Kingdom? I would say, you know, vote on this because... You can decide if I left this up for long enough, but you got a comment for that, and I don't know if that's going to happen, so instead we're just going to go to the top. Lake Kingdom it is. If you want democracy viewers, you got to vote. So that's up to you guys. We'll save that for another time, though. We'll be heading there. You got to show me with your words. Get used to this, because it's every time. Kind of like Super Mario Galaxy 2. Gotta get the Binding Band. Some more useful skills from Cappy. The homing cap throw. That's it. I probably won't use that, because I am ignorant. Here we go. The Lock Lady Dress. You gotta have a dress for a wedding. Right? Or wrong? I don't know. Wear whatever you want. 
Way to be all old fashioned. This is one of the various kingdoms of the world. With the brutals over the lake. That's it. That's it, the Brutals are here. Cappy has alerted us. But that's something that we'll be doing next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Super Mario Odyssey. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.